Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I am going to solve some of the kinematic problems uh, with you up on the board. Um, so, without further ado, make sure you have your five problems uh, solved first. And if you come to any problems, uh, this is where I can help you out. So, I'm going to start off by having the three kinematic equations. Uh, let's do question number one. Georgia is jogging with a velocity of four meters per second when she accelerates at two meters per second squared for three seconds. How fast is Georgia running now? So in order to do these problems, uh, what you have to do first is make a table of variables. Uh, I'm going to create that up here. Okay. Now, uh, when you do these, you have to know that some problems require two dimensions. And so you'll have to do a x and y table. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. All right. So it says that Georgia is running with a velocity of four meters per second. Um, that would be our initial velocity. Don't forget your units. Uh, it says that she accelerates at 2 meters per second squared for 3 seconds. It asks, how fast is Georgia running now? So I'm going to put a little question mark next to the variable that I want to uh, find out. Now, the next step is you got to go to your three equations and see which one has your missing variable. So the first equation has your missing variable right here. The second equation does not have your missing variable, so I'm not going to use that one. And the third one has our missing variable, so we can use that one. Oops, I messed up. Now, what we are going to do next is go to the table of variables and see which one of those variables we actually have. So we are looking for Vf. We have the initial, 4 meters per second. We have A, acceleration, and we have time which means that we can use the first equation in order to solve for this problem. So I'm going to write it down. Always, always, always start off with the equation without any numbers filled in. Um, this not only helps me as your teacher uh, see where you might have went wrong, but it also helps me identify which equation you used. Huh? Now, if we do that, we find that 2 times 3 is 6 plus 4 is 10 meters per second. All right, now that we solved the first one, let's try the second one together. It says a ball is dropped off of a very tall canyon ledge. Gravity accelerated the ball at 9.8 meters per second squared. How fast is the ball traveling after 5 seconds? All right, now what I want to think about now is, is the object moving in the x or the y direction? Now because it's an object that is falling, a object that is falling is falling in the y direction. So I'm going to fill my table of variables for the y variables. It says a ball is dropped off a very tall canyon ledge. Gravity accelerates the ball at 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, I'm going to write that as negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And the reason I put it down as a negative is because it's accelerating downwards. Um, it says the ball traveled for five seconds. Um, and it wants to know how fast the ball is traveling after those five seconds. So we are looking for V final. Now, here's one of those things you have to memorize. When an object is dropped, or when an object is released from its initial position, the most uh, highest point that the object is dropped from at that point, or aka the peak, or the max height, the velocity is zero meters per second. So when this object is first dropped, in the beginning it has zero meters per second for its initial velocity. All right, and now I'm going to go over to my three equations, um, and we're going to do the same test. What are we looking for? We're looking for the final velocity. So let's go through it. We have final velocity in the first equation. We have final velocity in the third equation, but we don't have final velocity in the second equation, so we can't use the second equation. Now, let's see. Does our first equation have all of the other variables that we have? And the answer is yes. We have initial velocity of zero. We have the acceleration, and we have the time. So I'm going to use the first equation. Remember, to always write the equation first uh, without any of the numbers filled in. We know that V initial is zero. We know that the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and we have our time as five seconds. Now, if we do this rounding, um, oh, I guess we don't have to round. Plug that into the calculator, and we get negative 49 meters per second. And that negative simply means that it's moving in the downward direction. All right, now for problem three. Problem three states, a dog is 60 meters away while moving at constant velocity of 10 meters per second towards you. Where is the dog after four seconds? 
right, let's go to the table of variables. Um, a dog is 60 meters away. Now, in this scenario, I think it would help to draw a picture. So that's me, stick figure. Um, and we can say that on a number line, the dog is... All right, that's my dog. Um, the dog is 60 meters away. So we can say that this distance is 60 meters away, or right there is 60 meters. Um, and the dog is moving at a constant velocity of 10 meters per second towards you. Okay, and he's moving in that direction. Where's the dog after four seconds? All right, so time is four seconds. Let's go to the table of variables. Um, I know that t is four. Um, the, the dog initially is 60 meters away, so that's my initial position. We want to know where the dog is after 4 seconds, and so that's the variable we're looking for, the final position. Um, the initial velocity of the dog is 10 meters per second. However, it's moving, in my frame of reference, towards me, and so that'll be negative, because it's moving towards the left. Um, and it says the velocity is constant, which means that the acceleration is zero meters per second. The velocity is not changing, which means that the final velocity is also 10 meters per second. All right, so we have a table and it is nearly filled. Let's see which equation we need to choose in order to solve this problem. Can we use the first equation? Well, we can't because it doesn't have the variable that we're looking for, x of f. So we can't use the first one. Can we use the second one? And the answer is, yes, we can use the second one, but we got to, I mean, the third one, but we got to think about it for a second. If our acceleration is zero, if our acceleration is zero, anything multiplied by zero will give us zero, which means that the variable that we're looking for, it'll just end up being zero. So we can't use a third equation, which leaves us with the second equation. So let's try it. I'm going to erase my drawing. Once again, start off with your original equation without any of the variables filled in. Our initial position was 60. Our initial velocity is negative 10. Four seconds has passed. Our acceleration is zero and four seconds squared. Anything multiplied by zero gives us zero. So we have, which means that after four seconds, the dog is 20 meters away from you. All right, problem number four. Isaac throws an apple straight up in the positive direction from one meter above the ground, reaching a maximum height of 35 meters. Neglecting air resistance, what is the ball's velocity when it hits the ground? All right, so for this one, I'm going to draw a little picture. We have Isaac right there, and Isaac throws an apple straight up from one meter above the ground. And this apple it says it reaches a maximum height of 35 meters. It wants to know how fast it is when it reaches the ground. So our final velocity. Now let's figure this one out. Um, now this was a little bit trickier because you we have like a semi-parabola. Now the best way that I think we should be able to solve this is to break it in half because there's critical information that we can find out once we know the maximum height. Okay? And you'll find that that's the easiest trick to do for any projectile motion problem. Where is the maximum height? So let's fill out our table of variables. We know that the maximum height is 35 meters. So I'm gonna go from there. I'm gonna say that's my initial position. Yes, I know that initially it was one meter above the ground, but however, I want to go from the highest location. So we say our highest location is 35 meters, and we know that it reaches the ground. So that'll be zero meters. Now, from the highest location, we can say that the velocity at the max peak is zero meters per second. The question is asking what the final velocity is when it reaches the ground. We know that because it didn't say anything else, the acceleration due to gravity will be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we don't know how long it took. Okay, but I'm not gonna write anything there yet um, because that's not what we're looking for. So let's take a look at our equations. Let's see if the equations can help us out find the final velocity. So we're looking for the final velocity, 
We have the initial velocity, we have the acceleration, but we don't have the time. We can't use that one. We have the final location, we have the initial position, we have the initial velocity, we have the acceleration, uh, but once again, we don't have the time. So what about this one? We are looking for the final velocity, we had the initial velocity, we had the acceleration, and we have the change in distance. So let's use that equation. Once again, write the original and let's solve from there. Once we plug everything in, we find that the answer is 686 meters per second in the negative direction, which just means it's going down. So the last thing that we need to do is to take the square root of this number, square root both sides, and then you'll get your answer. And that negative simply means that the object is going down. All right, the last problem that we're going to do is question five. A soccer ball is kicked horizontally off a 22 meter high hill and lands a distance of 35 meters from the edge of the hill. Determine the initial horizontal velocity of the soccer ball. Now, when you get a problem like this, which is in multi dimensions, what you um, really should do is draw a picture of the scenario. So there's my soccer ball, this is my cliff, um, and we know that it is 22 meters high and it lands a distance of 35 meters away from the edge of the cliff. The problem asks us to determine the initial horizontal velocity of the soccer ball. So what we need to do is we need to fill out this table of variables. Let's do the x table first. We can say that the initial position is zero, because that's our starting position. Um, the final position they gave us, which is 35 meters, we don't know the initial velocity, nor do we know the final velocity. But we do know that in the air, we can say that the acceleration, the x direction, would be 0 meters per second squared because we know that it doesn't slow down in the air, or at least for us. Um, and we don't know how long it took to be in the air. So that's for the x. Now let's do the same thing for the y. We know that the object is 22 meters above the ground. And eventually it lands on the floor, and we can call the floor 0. The initial y velocity is the, the starting point, and the starting point is the highest point along its path. And for the y velocity, the highest point will always have 0 meters per second for the vertical velocity. The final velocity we don't know, and the acceleration in the y direction will always be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now that we have the table of variables, what we want to do next is use one of these uh, equations to find the time for it to take to land on the floor. So let's try that. We're going to go through the equations one by one until we have an equation where time is the only variable that we don't have. Okay. Now I'm going to use the y variables in order to determine which equation that we need to use. So ask yourself, do we have the final velocity? The answer is no. Because we don't have the final velocity, we can't use that equation. Do we have the final position? Do we have the initial position? Initial velocity, we're looking for the time, the acceleration, and the time. And the answer for that is yes, of course. We have all of the variables except for the time variable, and that's the variable that we need to use. So uh, I'm going to start off by writing the equation itself. And now I'm going to fill in the values for the variables in the y direction. We know that the final position, which is the landing position, is zero. The initial height is 22 meters. The initial y velocity is 0, multiplied by the time, 1 half, negative 9.8, time squared. So when we do that, we get 22 minus 4.9 t squared. And when you plug that into the calculator, you get that the time is equal to 2.12 seconds. After you get the time variable, what you should do is plug it into your table of variables. And we know that time doesn't care if it's in the x or the y axis, and so we can write that the time for both the y and the x axis is the same. And you might be thinking to yourself, are we finished? And the answer is, of course, no. Because the question is asking for the initial horizontal velocity of the soccer ball. Because we're finding the initial horizontal velocity of the soccer ball, now we have to use the x variables in order to find the velocity. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go through the three equations to see which one of those equations that we can use. We're looking for the final, or you know, we're looking for the initial velocity, but we don't have the final velocity, so we can't use the first equation. We have the final position. We have the initial position. We're looking for the initial velocity. We have the time. 
We have the acceleration and we have the time. So we can use the second equation. Let's try it. If I plug that in, put, and I'll put in the variables that I know, we know that the final position is 35 meters. Our initial position is zero. We're looking for the initial velocity. And the time is 2.12 seconds. Now the acceleration, the x direction, we know it to be zero, so one half times zero times c squared will just give us zero. So if we take a look right here, what we get is the classic velocity equation. We get the position is equal to the velocity times the time. I can rewrite that to be, and that's where our equation came from. But in order to solve for the problem, what I would do is divide both sides by 2.12 to get 16. 0.51 meters per second, and that is my final answer.